Welcome to the Methodist Church Guyana District's Divine Worship. We are happy that you have joined us today. The Methodist Church Guyana District is one of eight districts that comprise the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. There are six circuits that make up the Guyana District. Burbies, Essequibo, Friendship, Georgetown, Mahaika, and West Demerara, with the United Mission Linden as an associate church. The president of the Guyana district is Bishop the Reverend Taslin Kofia Niles. The secretary to the district conference is Reverend Mervyn Ossie Austin while the treasurer of the district funds is Miss Yolanda Abiola James. The mission of our church is to spread scriptural holiness for the reformation of the nation, while our district theme is sanctify yourselves for mission, connect, give hope, restore, the church could be contacted on telephone number 592-226-1215. Our email address is guyanamethodist at yahoo.com. You can follow us on our YouTube channel and Facebook page as Methodist Church Guyana District and on Instagram as Methodist Guy 592 District. Every blessing.
Lord's Day to all viewers. Wherever you have joined us from today, we trust that you have come ready to receive the rich and matchless blessings from our triune God on this, the first Connectional Lord's Day of our church year. I am Sister Anisha Morthorne from the Friendship Circuit and I will be your liturgist for today while our preacher and celebrant will be Bishop the Reverend T. Kofi Annals, President of the Guyana District. It is a joy and privilege to have you worshiping with us once more. I invite you therefore to silence all distractions as we give to God the glory and honor that is due unto his name in this consecrated time of worship. As we continue to prepare our hearts for worship, we invite the choir to sing for us the choral intro.
us free. Lord God, we come before your throne of grace, continuing to sing great praises unto your name. We exalt you, O oh dear Jesus, as King of kings and Lord of lords and as the great Jehovah, for indeed, O oh God, you are much less, O oh dear Heavenly Father. We bless your name this morning as we adore you, O oh God, as we sing praises unto your name, as we say how great you are to us, as we sing mighty is your name, as we sing all praise to you. Oh dear Jesus, Father God, we worship you this morning. We lay our lives before you, even as we come to give you what is due unto you as this connectional Lord's day, oh dear Jesus. We bless your name and we exalt you, oh dear Jesus, for you are that friend, oh dear Jesus. You are that brother, oh dear Jesus. You are the lily of the valley. You are that bright and morning star unto us, oh God. We acknowledge you as the chief cornerstone. We acknowledge you as the one who would have guided us and protected us through a past year. And we bless your name, oh God, for you continue to be with us, dear Jesus. So we worship you this morning because you have been good and because we praise you, oh God, for what is to come. Much less Jesus, you, oh dear God, are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are mighty, oh God. And we know, dear Jesus, that, that, that we praise you, Lord God. You, oh dear Jesus, continue to bless us and to keep us, oh God. And even as we adore you this morning, oh God, even as we recognize that you are our Alpha and our Omega, oh God, even as we recognize that you are the giver of life, we also recognize, oh God, that we, your children, dear Jesus, would have failed you in one way or the other, dear Jesus. Father, we recognize that there are many things we would have done that did not seek to glorify your name. We recognize that some things we would have said would have been distasteful in your eyes, oh dear Jesus. Gracious God, even at this time, we recognize and appreciate that many times when you would have been beckoning us to do your will, we would have chosen some other thing that would not have brought you any glory and we ask of your forgiveness. We remember the many times when you would have been calling us to help bring your people back to you when we would have said that we have our limitations and would have gone elsewhere, oh God, we ask of your forgiveness. For the many times when we should have been giving water, when we should have been helping to water and to help to spread that spiritual holiness to reform your nation, oh God, and we would have sought rather than to spread it, oh dear Jesus, we would have been spreading things that would not have glorified your name and we ask of your forgiveness. For the many times, oh dear Jesus, when we should have been singing praises unto your name, when we should have been glorifying you with our hands and our feet, we would have allowed ourselves, almighty God, in human form to go astray and to be tempted and to yield to the temptations of the enemy and we ask of your forgiveness, oh God. We ask, Lord God, that as you wash us and as you cleanse us, Heavenly Father, that you will take away everything that will prevent us, that is preventing us from accessing you and your throne of grace, O oh God. Everything that will prevent us from accepting and from knowing and coming closer to you, O oh dear Jesus. Wash us, O oh God. Cleanse us, O oh God. And as you wash us and cleanse us, as you search our hearts, God, we pray that indeed you will continue to fill us then with more of your love. Fill us then with more of your word. Fill us then with more of your peace and your understanding, O oh God. Gracious God, we thank you that as we pray to you, the forgiving God, we thank you for that assurance of pardon, O oh God. We thank you that our sins are forgiven, O oh God. We thank you, dear Jesus, that you will wash us. You 
have washed us as we asked, O oh God. You have washed us and cleansed us in your blood. That blood that washes whiter than snow. And we are so grateful for your cleansing, O oh God. So even as you have washed us and as we say thank you for your cleansing, O oh God. We continue to say how thankful we are, O oh God, for your blessings. We continue to say how thankful we are for your grace. We continue to say thank you for the many testimonies that you would have blessed us with as a people called Methodist over the past church year, O oh God. We thank you for the many times when it didn't seem as though things would have been possible that you came through for us and gave us testimonies, O oh God. We thank you for the many times when in our human eyes it seemed as though it was a mess, but you gave us a message out of it, O oh God. We thank you for the many times when you would have scooped us up in your loving arms and taken us across that heavy, that hard, that rocky ground, oh God, and give us a testimony that will continue to bring honor and glory to your name, oh God. We thank you for the many times when you would have caused us through your testimony and through how you work, oh God, to put the enemy to shame with how you would have blessed us, oh God. We thank you for life, spirit, oh God. We thank you for the experiences we would have had with those who would have gone before us, oh God. We thank you, gracious God, for the inspiration and for every instinct and every resource that you would have granted unto us, our leaders and everyone, oh God, to do your work here on earth. More so, God, we thank you for the strength that you would have granted unto us. We thank you for the many times when we could indeed say we lifted our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing, oh God, that our help comes from you. It came from you, it is coming, and it will continue to come from you. And so we thank you, oh God. So gracious God, as we thank you, we pray, Lord God, that you will continue to be with us. For we know that you are that God who is always present with us. So be with us as we worship you this morning, O oh God. Take full control of this worship experience this morning, O oh God. Move like never before, O oh God. Give us a word that will cause us to be renewed and revived and refreshed by time this worship experience would have come to an end, O oh God. Cause us to indeed rise up in this new church year, oh God, and go out boldly to proclaim your name. So Father, we come against every act of the enemy that he may want to have and may want to succeed in this our consecrated time of worship. And we come against the spirit of disorder and confusion, oh God, and pray that you will reign supreme, oh God. So Father God, take full control of our worship experience. Continue to guide us, continue to open our ears, open our hearts, oh God, as you move mightily. This we pray, oh dear Jesus, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, on this connection on Lord's Day, I wish to share with you briefly why is it that we call our church a connectional church? The Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas is made up of eight districts. Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, Belize, Honduras, Guyana, Jamaica, Haiti, Panama, Costa Rica, Leeward Islands, South Caribbean districts. Each district is made up of circuits and congregations and so we are not independent of each other but rather we are interdependent we are all connected with the common goal of spreading scriptural holiness for the reformation of the nation for example in Diana there are six circuits each circuit is made up of the congregations so the congregation feeds the circuit, the circuit feeds the district, the district feeds the connection. Our connectional office is in Antigua and it is 
headed by the Bishop, the Reverend Everett Galbraith, and our Connectional Secretary is the Reverend Jacqueline Liddell. Our Connectional Vice President is Dr. Hubert Marquette, he's from Haiti, and our Treasurer, Sister Peggy Muriel Smith. That is the nature of our connection. We depend on each other, we help each other, we are there for each other. So not independent, but rather interdependent. We lean on each other as we seek to advance the work of God in this part of his vineyard. I now invite the immediate past Vice President, Mrs. Janet Breeds, to share with us the President's message. Brothers and sisters, I will now read the Connectional President's message, which comes to us at the beginning of the Methodist Church year. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the grace and peace of the Lord be with you. Our pilgrimage continues into a new connectional year. We are constrained to join with Charles Wesley and joyfully declare, his providence has brought us through another various year. We celebrate God's grace and mercy during the past year and renew and reaffirm our hope and confidence that the best is yet to come because God is with us. Friends, through all the changing and unpredictable scenes of life, our loving and compassionate God is with us. Therefore, we cannot allow ourselves to be daunted by all the negative forces around us. As believers and citizens of this region, we are forced to grapple with the negative effects of COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, hurricanes, earthquakes, crime and violence, volcanic eruption, and other natural and man-made disasters. The sacrifices and dedication of our governments, health workers, first responders, educators, scientists, and all who are given human service in the interest of the welfare and well-being of our citizens are indicators that there is love, goodness, tenacity, and hope in our people. The creativity, resilience, determination, and faith of our clergy and laity during these times are evidence that greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. The connectional theme for the triennium, facing the task unfinished, pressing forward with Christ, the development and approval of the MCCA Unified Strategic Direction 2021 to 2026 are further evidence of the unyielding conviction that God is not finished with the MCCA. Every member of the MCCA ought to remember that it is our mission to spread scriptural holiness and transform societies. This is an unfinished task of our church. As disciples, it is our task to make more disciples as we go. We are assured of Jesus' presence in all circumstances. By God's grace, a brighter future awaits us as we press forward with Christ. We celebrate with the four ministers who have now joined the noble rank of the superannuated. It is encouraging that four additional soldiers have joined the front line as they begin circuit ministry and one has joined those who are in training at UTCWI. They need our prayers. Many more soldiers of Christ are required. Join me in encouraging others to respond positively to God's call to ordained and lay ministry. We praise God for our esteemed patriarch of Caribbean Methodism, Reverend Dr. Claude Lambton Cadogan, 
who was promoted to glory on August 20th, 2021. He was blessed with over 106 years on this earth, and we were fortunate to have journeyed with him. Our faithful God will give him eternal rest. Praise God for the commitment and faithfulness of the officers, leaders, preachers, and members. The work of God, especially in these times, it is not easy. However, I assure you that God will strengthen us as we continue to give the best of our time, talent, and treasure for the work of the church. In closing, the three new connection officers, the immediate past vice president and I, will need your continued prayers and encouragement as we seek to lead God's church according to God's will during these turbulent times. Sisters and brothers, let us press forward with Christ and be determined that our lips and lives shall gladly show the wonders of God's love. While on in Jesus' steps we go to see Christ's face above. Charles Wesley, VIP number 503. We will not be defeated because God is with us and God is on our side. Let's stay on God's side. Bishop the Reverend Everett Albright, Connection President. Thank you. We continue to worship God and I invite you to stand as we go to God in a period of praise in worship.
to the ministry of the word. We pray the connect. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our responsive reading will be led by Reverend Vince Chichester. Brothers and sisters, our psalm for the day is Psalm 125. If you have a VIP, flat 1, it's 644. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounded his people from this time on and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, so that the righteous may not stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their own crooked ways, the Lord will lead away the people who us. Peace be unto Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without him. Amen. The epistle reading will be read by Brother Lensworth Blair. The epistle reading comes to us from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1 to 10, and 14 to 17. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet, have you not made distinction among yourself and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith? and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor. It is not the rich who oppress you. Is it not the rich that oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but falls in one point has become accountable to all of it. Verse 14 and 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters? If you say you have faith, but do not have works, can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to him, Go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply his bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. This is the word of the Lord, and peace to God. We continue with the hymn, God Moves in a Mysterious Way. Hymn number 266, in the Voices in Praise.
which comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 7, reading from verse 24 to verse 37. Glory to you, O God. From there he set out and went to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Saronifian origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Christian friends, I invite you now to open your hearts and receive the word of God that he would have sent to us through his manservant, the Bishop, the Reverend T. Kofi Niles. Friends, it's a joy to be with you on this, the first Lord's Day of a brand new church year. We thank God for the faithfulness of his servants, especially Dr. Moore Thorne, who has been our liturgist this morning. Our text today comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 24 to 37. And this text highlights for us the special interest that Mark's Gentile readers had for the particular verse that we will be looking at. You see, it contains an account of Jesus traveling to a Gentile country and speaking with a Gentile woman, which led to her daughter being healed. We often refer to the whole Pericope as the Syrophoenician woman's faith. This woman who encountered Jesus, there were some challenges, but in the end, she received a blessing. Her request was honored. And so I'd like us to think of the theme, the difference the power of God makes in our lives. The difference the power of God makes in our lives. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. We ask of you, Lord God, to minister to us as only you can. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts 
be found acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. Amen and amen. <clears throat> Friends, we recognize that in this particular passage from Mark chapter 7, Jesus was out of his usual place, his Jewish community. He took a deliberate action to go to a Gentile country. So the passage tells us from here, he arose and he went into the border of Tyre. He went to this country between Tyre and Sidon, the Gentile country. You see, this was the place where Jezebel resides. Do you remember Jezebel, Elijah's arch enemy, quote unquote? For Jezebel and Elijah in um, the book of Kings, first Kings, had this contest. Remember the prophets of Baal and so forth. So it is in this place that Jesus finds himself. Not by accident, I believe, but with purpose. It inspired the disciples to recognize that he did not just rely on his own people. For indeed, he did not come to his own, but to all who receive him, he gives the power to become sons and daughters to all who believe in his name. And so we recognize that Christ stepped out of what was the usual in order to make a positive impact in the life of this woman and also the story that follows. We see that it is remarkable that Jesus would visit such a place He came to break down barriers. Those which divided people one from another, race from race, clan and groups. He came as the uniting force. And so we see the difference that the power of the presence of God makes in the lives of people. He came to save. He came to seek, he came to restore, he came to mend the broken heart. In his mission statement, he made it clear, release to the prisoner, recovery of sight to the blind, freedom for the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so in the passage, we recognize that Jesus enters into this house. He did not want anyone to know that he was there. But yet the news spread like wildfire. Given the character of the story, the house seemed to have been a Jewish home. Jesus purposely visiting this area, this area that some may consider to be not usual, unclean, unsafe. So the region of itself was populated mostly by Gentiles, but there were a few Jews in the midst. And the words that Jesus used highlights this for us. Brothers and sisters, in this home, up comes the woman, a woman of Syrophoenician origin. And she had a request of Jesus. She asked Jesus to heal her child. This child was possessed with demons. And so she made a request to Jesus. Now, this is a Gentile woman speaking to a Jewish man making a request. The context of the society at that time, this was like a no-no. It was sort of similar to the woman of Samaria meeting Jesus at the well. 
the disciples, when they saw them discoursing, they were shocked, but they said nothing in the case of the woman of Samaria. But here, we see the discourse, we see the request being made, and Jesus' response to that request. He says, the children should be fed first. The word seems harsh, especially when you use the term, the food should not be given to the dogs. But my brothers and sisters, this woman had a need, and so nothing was going to stop her. And even though the words used by Jesus might have seemed harsh, her response to Jesus is what made the difference. Because he claimed and he declared, because you have said this, her response was, even the dogs eat the crumbs that falls from the children's table. Because you have said this, Jesus opined, your daughter will be well. Go your way, all is well. Brothers and sisters, the presence and the power of God made a difference in this home. I want us to understand this. The woman did not invite Jesus to come to go to her home to touch her daughter. She simply asked Jesus to heal her daughter. And I want us also to note that Jesus did not say, Demon, be gone. He did not say, be thou healed. He simply gave the word, go. Go, your daughter will be well. And these words of Jesus brought about the change. Because we are told in the passage of when she went home, she found her daughter to be well. Demon gone and all. What a word. And what a power. And it's demonstrated here. It was like the centurion who came to Jesus when his soldier was not well. And he asked. And in fact, he was the one who said, all you need to do is to say the word because I'm a man under authority. And the same result was the outcome. A change, a transformation, healing. So the difference that the presence and the power of God made in this situation brought joy to a mother. She was determined she was persistent and she persevered through it all. In the end, because of the presence of Christ, things changed. What a difference it made. The joy that was restored for that family because her daughter was free from the oppression. Her daughter was free from the power of the evil spirit. Brothers and sisters, we see a contrast in these two stories. In one, the mother came to demonstrate her faith on behalf of her daughter. And in the second, we see friends bringing one who was mute and deaf, one who had a speech impediment and could not hear to Jesus and they asked Jesus to touch him. The mother did not ask for a touch from Jesus. She did not ask for a visit from Jesus. She simply asked that her child be set free. And so we recognize that here the physical touch was offered to one and the word was spoken for the other. The end result being the same. Change, transformation. That's the power of the presence of God and it makes in our lives when we tap into him, when we tap into that source, when we call on the name of the Lord. Friends, 
we see some symbolic action taking place. Because Jesus moved from one community to another. Here, the custom was that the Jews, the doctor, the Jewish doctors would often do the, use the ears and do the touching and even saliva was used at times in healing. It is not that what Christ did in terms of the saliva used to bring about the healing. But we see the process. He touched, put his fingers in the man's ear. Then he touched his tongue. And then he spoke the word. Unlike the first. He spoke the word. And he said, be healed. Be healed. And we are told in the passage that immediately. Be opened. To be precise. And immediately, the man's ears were open. His tongue was released and he spoke plainly. The presence of God, the power of God, made a difference in his life. Can you imagine the change that came over this man? The pastor doesn't tell us whether he was born uh, not being able to hear and with the speech impediment. It doesn't tell us how long he was there in that position. But it tells that he was changed. The impediment was no more and he was now able to hear. The difference that the power of God made for him. And by extension for all of us when we come to Jesus when we come to him, we experience that touch. When we come to him, we experience that power. He makes the difference in our lives. There are so many testimonies out there. Once I was, but then I met Jesus. And now I am because of the presence of the Lord in our lives. Can you imagine the change for this man's family? If he had a family. Can you imagine the change of the community? We are told that they were, they were all astonished by what they saw, what they experienced. Because he spoke plainly, because his ears were opened. They were astounded beyond measure. And they were saying, he has done everything well. He even opened makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This was the testimony of the community, my brothers and sisters. And on this connection on Lord's Day, we are part of a community. We are there for each other. That's the design of our church. We are to be our brothers and our sisters keeper. And so we lend a hand for others. There were friends who brought this man to see Jesus because they saw that there was a need in his life. In a similar way, we are called upon to reach out to assist our brothers and our sisters because we know that the presence of God and the power of God always makes a difference. That is why we are called upon to be there for each other. That is why we are called upon to be our brothers and our sisters keepers. So whether we live in Haiti where the earthquake has struck, whether we live in St. Vincent where the volcano has struck, whether we live in the islands where so often the hurricanes would pass through, whether we live in Guyana where the flood would come from time to time, we are there for each other as a community of faith as a connection and the power of God makes the difference in our lives and in our situation. Friends, there were times when the word was spoken and then there were times when the touch was needed. God uses us to make that touch. God uses us to reach out and to make a difference in the lives of others because, my brothers and sisters, as they put it, we are his hands. We are his feet. He uses us here to minister in his name. So yes, 
the power of Christ and the presence of Christ makes the difference in our lives. You reflect on your own life, on your own story. You will agree with me this morning that yes, it is only because of the love of God. It is only because of the presence of God. So often we have these encounters and we can testify, thank you Jesus. I don't know what I would have done without you. I don't know how I would have gotten through this without your presence, without your guidance, without your touch. And so brothers and sisters, we see here, it doesn't matter whether it is a physical presence or the spoken word, the power, there is power in the name of Jesus. And we see that power being demonstrated in these two stories as recorded in Mark chapter 7. In our lives, daily, we too can experience that power. And so as we seek to apply this word to our lives today, we know that we can call on God. We know that when we come to him in faith, he responds to us and he makes the difference in our situation because his power is available to one and to all. So let us be there for each other in this new church year. Let us demonstrate that faith let us exercise that faith that God has so freely given to us. His grace is sufficient and nothing is beyond him. Nothing is, is, is beyond his reach. As we come in faith, as we come trusting, the woman came believing. She came demonstrating her faith. And as a result, her daughter was made whole and restored. The man who was mute and deaf was brought. Christ gave and offered that physical touch and his presence brought a transformation in his life. We can testify of the difference that the presence of God makes in our lives. We can think about the past, where we were, and what God did and how we were able to come through because of his presence. Let us keep relying on him. Let us keep trusting him in this new year. He is the uniting force. He went beyond what was usual. He went to enemy territory, so to speak. He went to the Gentile town, the Gentile country. And he proclaimed, he tore down the barriers, the separation. Because we are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. Yes, Paul speaks of first to the Jews, and then to the Greeks, and then to the Gentiles. But all in all, my brothers and sisters, John declares, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Again, John declares, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so the presence and the power of God will always make the difference as we tap into that resource. And so I encourage us, my brothers and sisters, as we embark on this new year, to trust God. I invite us as we embark on this new year to put your faith in action, to rely on God so that he will make the difference in your life, he will make the difference in your situation, he will transform whatever it is you're going through as you call on his name. The mess, he will make a message. The downtrodden, he will lift up. The broken hearted, he will mend. The blind, he will cause to see. Whether it be a physical blindness or a spiritual blindness. Whether it be a physical deafness or a spiritual deafness. Sometimes God is speaking to us and we don't want to hear. We hear all other things. But trusting him, relying on his power will truly make the difference for us 
Because wherever Christ is, whenever he comes into our lives, we are never the same. So today, I trust that each of us will embrace the love of God, will embrace the power of God, and know that he will make the difference in your situation, in your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we are grateful for your word this morning. It reminds us of the difference your power makes in our lives. That power which is available to each of us. And so Lord God, help us to remember that we are not alone, but we are part of a connection. Help us to remember, Lord God, that we have a responsibility for each other. For we are our brothers and our sisters' keeper. And whether it just be a spoken word or a physical touch, it doesn't matter because you are omniscient, you are omnipresent. You make the difference, O oh Lord, when we call. And so help us to call in faithfulness. Help us to call in a persistent with obedience. Help us to be persistent, O oh God, so that indeed you will respond as you see fit, as we call on your name. So let your will be done for us. In Jesus' name we pray that this word will take root and produce fruit. Amen. And amen. What a powerful message. We bless God for how he would have used his manservant to speak to us this morning. In response to his message, we sing, shackled by a heavy burden, hymn number 181 in the voices in praise. Lord of Lords. We would like to celebrate with those who are 
have been anniversaries, whether birth or marriage, during this week. We pray God's continued blessings upon you and that the year ahead will be fruitful and productive as you continue to lead on Him. So, happy birth anniversary, happy wedding anniversary. We would like to encourage all of you to tune in to our various programs. Our Bible study will recommence next week. And so we invite you to be a part of that 5.30 every Wednesday afternoon, 5.30 or 7.30 hours. Our music program will also recommence the date for the different circuits and the time will be communicated in our groups, in the group chats, the Facebook, Facebook and the, the WhatsApp groups, sorry. I'm still getting accustomed to all of these terminologies, but you will find the information on your location and your class in the group chat. We thank God for those who have contributed to our mission outreach to the United Mission as we sought to provide back to school gear and materials for the children of Linden. We thank you for your contribution to this important mission. As you know, it's the beginning of the new church year, and so we encourage those persons, secretaries, and head of committees to have their reports in order as we seek to meet and to finalize so that we can have our connectional system moving smoothly. This afternoon, we will welcome the Reverend Vince Chichester and Mrs. Chichester to the Georgetown Circuit at the welcome service to be held at the Kingston Congregation from 1600 hours. All are welcome to share with us as we bid welcome to our new minister in the Georgetown Circuit. Also next Thursday at 4.30 at the Anna Katrina Congregation, there will be an induction service for Reverend Baggett, Noel St. Baggett, who will be the new superintendent of the West Delaware Circuit. We invite you to join us there as well. So God bless you and thank you for your contribution towards the work and the mission of the church which keeps us going as we're able to reach out to proclaim the word of God through this medium and other ways. God. Also we do invite you to join us for our connectional service which will be held on the 19th of September at 6 p.m. Guyana time. So this is where the whole connection across the Caribbean and Americas will join in worship. And we ask you to be a part of that. The Zoom link will be provided in due time. God bless you. Let us go to God in our prayers of intercession. Loving Father, on this connection of Lord's Day, we bring before you the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. We thank you, Father, for the way in which you have journeyed with us through all these years, for the impact and the witness of your church throughout the Caribbean regions and the Americas. You have brought us thus far and we know, Lord, that you will continue to lead us on. And so in this new year, we pray for the eight bishops of the Connection. We pray for our Connectional Bishop that you will grant wisdom and understanding, that you will give a clear vision, O oh God, so that your purpose for your church will indeed be accomplished here in this part of your vineyard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you the universal church. Bind us together, O oh God, with cords of love, that your common purpose of proclaiming your word will be accomplished through the efforts and the ministries that we exercise as a people called the Christians. We pray, O oh God, that you will equip us to deal with the scourges of society, the ills that continues to rise. We ask, O oh God, that you will show your light afresh, shine your light afresh upon us, that we may seek as a community of faith to eradicate the darkness, bringing restoration, bringing healing, bringing comfort, bringing your peace. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the countries of the world that are affected by natural and man-made disasters. We think of our region, those affected by the hurricanes, the earthquake, volcano. Lord God, we ask for your providence and your protection even now, as we think of our brothers and sisters across the region, especially those in Haiti who have been affected. Lord God, we ask for your peace. We thank you for those who have been reaching out to bring restoration, who have been serving, O oh God, as agents of change, medical outreaches, providing much needed care for those in need. We pray, O oh God, that their efforts will not go in vain, but rather your people will demonstrate an attitude of gratitude, even as by your power, by your spirit, O oh God, they receive that heavenly touch from you. For we know when you are present, you always make a difference. For your power is beyond anything we can ask, think, or imagine. And so we pray that your power will be evident in the lives of those who suffer as they lean on you, O oh God, for that strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we bring before you the government and people of Guyana. We pray for His Excellency the President, Dr. Ali, the Honorable Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition and all members of Parliament. Lord, inspire them that as they seek to lead, they may do so remembering that they are servants of the people and not Lord and Masters. Bless our resources, O God, and those who manage them, so that the best outcome can be received for the citizens of this dear land of ours. Ask for your protection over the members of the discipline services as they seek to serve and protect. Those on the front line, O God, battling the pandemic, our doctors, our nurses, our lab technicians, our drivers, our porters, our cleaners. So God, we ask that you will cover them, that even as they serve, that they will receive that reward of knowing, Lord God, that you will not leave them and you will not forsake them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We remember our sister, Princess Thompson, and her family. Even at this time, Lord, we pray for your comfort and for your peace. We call to mind, O oh God, all those who have lost loved ones. And we pray, Lord, that you will comfort them. For you said you will turn our mourning into dancing. May they know your peace even at this time. Lord God, we pray asking all of these in the name of him who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name and thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, all, on this Connection of Lord's Day, as we prepare to share in the common meal with our brothers and sisters across the world, we sing our communion hymn. Let us enter into covenant with Christ, numbered 429.
cover your prepared table as we share in the liturgy found on page 95 of our prayers. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and fitting, joyful and salutary, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we join in the hymn of everlasting praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with them and they with me. Let us pray together the prayer of the Lord. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather the crumbs on the earth here, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. We invite the head of the home to share the elements, and we will partake together after we would have received here as we worship our God. You who truly and sincerely repent of your sins, are in love and charity with your neighbors, and have resolved to lead a new life, following the commandments of our Lord. Draw near in faith. Receive his body which was broken for you, and his blood which was shed for you, and be thankful. Body and blood of our Lord broken and shed for you. Body and blood of our Lord broken and shed for you. Body and blood of our Lord broken and shed for you. Body and blood of our Lord broken and shed for you. Body and blood of our Lord broken and shed for you. Body and blood of our Lord broken and shed for us. Those in their homes, we take and we eat in remembrance of Christ's body was broken and we are thankful. Cup of blessing, which was blessed for us. Those in our homes, we take and drink in remembrance of Christ's blood was poured out for us, and we are thankful. Lord who touches us bringing wholeness touch you even now through the presence of this holy sacrament and restore your soul go in peace and may the God of peace go with you Amen. Amen and now we thank you Lord that your fairness in this sacrament united us with Christ and given us a poor taste of the heavenly family prepared for all mankind I'm not ashamed to own my Lord or to defend his cause. Maintain the honor of his word, the glory of his cross. We stand and sing our closing hymn, number 268, in the voices in praise. Thank you. 
sisters, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. As you have been fed, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go to set free the imprisoned. As you have received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. And the blessings which you have received from the Creator, Christ our brother, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, be always with you, now and forevermore. Amen.